Hi, today we're going to talk about the four pillars of service networking. These four pillars are really aimed at solving common challenges that organizations face within their network. These four pillars address challenges that include service discovery, securing network services, automating network infrastructure, and controlling access to network services. So we'll start with the first one with an example. So within an organization, it likely has many countless numbers of services that are all spread out across different teams, different networks, different runtimes. These runtimes could include Kubernetes, ECS, VMs, Nomad. And these services can also be spread across different clouds. Of course, you have the usual suspects, AWS, Azure, GCP, and likely there'd be some private cloud as well. So as you can see, you have a heterogeneous environment spread across all these different uh, clouds and runtimes, right? So one of the challenges is having some type of single service discovery across all these different environments. Some of these platforms like Kubernetes or AWS provide built-in service discovery capabilities, but they're really limited in scope to that platform or that cloud. And there, there's no singular global service discovery, right? So that's one thing that a lot of organizations to look for. The next thing is securing network services, right? And in particular, uh, organizations want to be able to connect all these different services, but really connect them uh, in a secure manner and employing zero trust principles. So when we're talking about zero trust networking principles, we're referring to mostly authorization authentication and encrypting. So can it be done today? Yeah, probably could be done today, but it's not straightforward. It could be very cumbersome uh, and it's not super easy. So for example, if we're looking at authorization, organizations can do it today. So if they have some type of firewall, they can authorize, meaning they can allow one service to talk to another service. They can authorize that through the use of a firewall that's gating based on an IP address. So let's say IPA communicating with IPB through this firewall, and this firewall is determining whether or not to let that traffic go through. And now you're basing it on a, an IP address, right? Your, your unit of control is this IP address, which is very, you know, very flawed because IPs are ephemeral, right? As services scale up and scale down, these IPs change for each one of these services, which means you're constantly having to manage and, and, and update these, these firewalls. So it's not ideal. So the next part is authenticating and encrypting. Again, you can do this today, and a lot of, a lot of organizations may have to do it through having to embed this additional code into their applications and their services, right? To make sure they are properly encrypting their services when they communicate. And the burden really falls on the developers to have to include this code. And not only that, they have to make sure it's maintained over time by rotating these secret, these uh, keys and certificates for uh, for these applications. Oh, and how do you really enforce this across the whole organization, across all these different teams, across all these different services, right? So that becomes a challenge as well. The third item here is automating network devices. So uh, we already talked about how you have to update these, these firewalls to make sure that the latest IP addresses, right? So when day two comes around, let's say these services scale up or you have additional services that, uh, that come online, and maybe they have to communicate with these other services. So again, you're gonna have to update these, these firewalls, which becomes a challenge. And again, you can do that today, but what you typically do is you'd have some type of network admin that manages or owns this firewall or whatever the network device happens to be, and there's typically some type of ticket from the developer to the uh, network admin requesting for this. And this is a long, lengthy process. It's you know, a whole manual ticketing system that may take uh, you know, days to complete, right? So again, not ideal. 
The fourth item is controlling access to these services. So uh, there are times where you have external clients that want to have access to some of these services or APIs that may be available. So in order to do that, a lot of times there are various API gateways provided by different clouds or third-party uh, vendors that provide that. But you know, again, you're managing multiple different API gateways or having a specific API gateway for a point solution, uh, and you're just juggling and, and managing multiple different tools, which again is not ideal. So how can we address this, right? Well, that's why Console was developed to address a lot of these challenges, and that's why we call them the four pillars. So again, let's now start with service discovery. One of the foundational capabilities that Console was uh, developed for was to have some type, provide some type of service discovery in a global manner. So if you have Console here, Console provides this centralized service discovery capability because it's cloud agnostic, platform agnostic, it doesn't care. So all of these different services across these different environments can register themselves with console. So now you have services that all register with console and console is now this, this centralized catalog. And now console is aware of everything now. It's really the central source of truth with regards to all your services. It knows about all the IPs that are tied to these services. It knows about services scaling up and scaling down, right? So that's the basis of what we're going to start talking about next. Um, so now you have single, uh, single centralized service discovery where teams can have their services discover services from other teams across other, net other networks. Now let's talk about the, uh, the network security aspect of this. So remember, we want to we want to be able to connect these different services, but connect them in a secure manner and employ zero trust networking principles. So uh, it includes these three principles: authorization, authentication, and encryption. So let's start with authorization. When uh, when we're talking about um, these services here, and we're talking about Secure networking. We're actually referring to the the console's uh, console service mesh capability. So keep that in mind. So within the service mesh, each one of these services has a service identity. So this is a this is a logical construct that really represents each one of these services. So now each one of these services is called this service A, service B. This is a service identity that represents these two services here. So when we're talking about authorization and, again, allowing or deny traffic to move between two services, we're no longer relying on IP addresses uh, and maintaining this firewall to allow or deny traffic. All you're doing is setting up one simple rule that says, can service A talk to service B? And so say a developer can just simply go in and say, hey, I want to create this rule that allows A to talk to B. And that's it. It doesn't matter how many instances there are, what the underlying IP IPs are, it just will be enforced by console to allow these two services to communicate, right? So now let's move on to the authorization, uh, or sorry, authentication and encryption part of this. Um, so when we're talking about you know, authentication and encryption, uh, you no longer have to rely on the developers to include the code because this all is, is part of console. Console provides this out of the box, right? Uh, and so when services communicate, Console will make sure that what they do prior to sending traffic across the network is that they exchange TLS certificates. We call this mutual TLS. And so when that happens and everything's authenticated, traffic moving forward will be encrypted. So now you're fully secure and you are authorized, authenticated, and encrypted using Console. All right, so now. Moving on to the next part of it, which is automating network devices. So we just talked about how these service identities can be used instead of IP addresses, right? So you're no longer having to update these firewalls. However, firewalls still exist. You're not going to get rid of firewalls. They're still there to, pr to, to protect uh, access into or out of your network, between networks, right? between VPCs, between VNets. So they're still there. And in the case of where you, know, you have these services that scale up or scale down or new services come online, again, you have to update these network devices. And again, are you going to have to go through a manual workflow or, or is it a better solution to have something automated? So I'm guessing the answer is you prefer it to be automated. And so let's go back to Console's catalog here. 
it's a central source of truth and knows about all the different services that scale up, scale down, and knows when services get registered. So it, it's all aware. So using that, that knowledge, there's an integration called Console Terraform Sync between Console and Terraform where when a service changes, scales up or scales down, like I said, um, Console will trigger Console Terraform Sync to go out and perform these updates to the necessary network devices. So no longer are you relying on these, these manual workflows and ticketing systems that pass through different teams in different hands, uh, but you're just doing it automatically. And this can happen in a matter of minutes versus waiting for you know, hours or potentially days for this to occur. And a more important piece of this is in, from the aspect of security, when services get retired or scales down, this automatically happens through this automated workflow rather than, again, having someone potentially forget to go update these network devices when services retire, right? Okay, so now let's move on to controlling access to these services. So we mentioned how console service mesh controls all the different uh, ways you can control traffic between services in inside of a service mesh. We call that east-west traffic, right? And when there are times where you have these external clients wanting to reach into the service mesh and, and communicate and, and, and consume these services, uh, you'll want to use like an API gateway. But instead of using different disparate API gateways from different tools for different clouds, from different uh, vendors, uh, or having a specific tool just for uh, the API gateway, you can have an API gateway that's built into console. Again, so you're now having co a consistent way of controlling east-west traffic as well as north-south traffic through the console API gateway. All right, so now all consolidated into a single solution. You don't have to install anything. This is part of console. You just enable it and then manage it the same way as services within your service mesh. All right. So those are the, the four ways that console can address a lot of these challenges. We call those the four pillars of service networking. Hopefully you have a better understanding of it and why it's so important for a lot of these organizations to, to have these capabilities uh, and how console can address it all in one single solution. So thanks for watching. If you want more information, take a look at our console.io page for more details. Thanks again.